Now, recently there was a standoff in Oregon, obviously, you remember, with the militia. Uh, they had occupied a federal building for a long time with guns. And then they decided that they were going to go talk to a sheriff in a different county and try to do a coup in that county. So they got in their cars and started driving, and they were surprised that they were pulled over by the cops. Now, this whole thing is insane because anybody else other than white right wingers take over a federal bu building armed and threaten to shoot cops who come in, which is exactly what they did, they'd be obliterated. Obliterated. We wouldn't be having a conversation. We would have a three weeks, three weeks standoff. We wouldn't let them drive around town and get mail, but they did. They were allowed to have food deliveries. The post office delivered mail for them. They were getting chicken soup for their terrorist soul. Okay, they, all this privilege. So when they're out driving around again, the cops go, all right, look, this is taking a long time. We've uh, spent a lot of money on it. We're going to pull these guys over and finally arrest them. They're so taken aback by that. Like, what, what? I, I'm a right winger. I thought I could take over anything I want. Don't I own this country? Part of their plan was to take land that was originally Native American and just uh, give it to their white friends. I think we've seen that movie before. God, they are oozing with white privilege. Now, you're going to see a, a tragic situation here. And, I, and I'm going to warn you here in the second video, uh, Lavoie Finnegan, if you haven't heard the news before, he was the one guy who got shot and he was killed. Now, you're not going to see him getting killed, but you're all going to hear it, okay? So if you're uncomfortable with that, I get it, don't watch it, okay? But the reason I'm showing it to you is, because first of all, of course, conspiracy theories pop up. Oh, no, the government wanted to kill him. Blah, blah, blah. As you're going to see here, he can't wait for the government to shoot him. And a lot of people think this is suicide by cop. I have a different take on it. First, let's show you what happened when they started filming inside the car. This is them shooting it themselves, okay, uh, when they first got pulled over by the cops. Let's watch that. Shoot me, you shoot me. I'm going to meet the sheriff. The sheriff is waiting for us. So you do as you damn well please. But I'm not going anywhere. Here I am, right there. Right there, put a bullet through it. You understand? I'm going to go meet the sheriff. You back down or you kill me now. Go ahead, put the bullet through me. I don't care. Where's Ryan? I'm going to go meet the sheriff. You do as you damn well please. We got, we're going to go see the sheriff. Okay, so that's LaVoy Finnegan uh, yelling, put a bullet through me. Uh, later they did. You're about to see that in a second. Like I said, you're going to hear it more than see it. Uh, it is raw footage. It, it's tough to watch. The whole 12 and a half minutes, when you look at it, uh, there are other interesting moments uh, when uh, Ryan Bundy in the back says, hey, where are the guns? Let's get the guns. So it's obvious they have guns, and then later, after LaVoy Finnegan was shot, uh, they found a gun in his pocket, and, and we've shown you the video in the past, where he gets out of the car, and he reaches for this pocket several times, and the cops shoot him. Now you're going to see that there's shots fired right away when they start to get out, because what happens is, after they wait there for a while, they decide, who doesn't listen to the cops? We didn't listen to the cops when we did this uh, down in Nevada, in, in Clive and Bundy's ranch in the first place, and we won. We got whatever we wanted. We took over the federal building in Oregon. We didn't have to listen to the cops. We just put guns to their heads and nothing happened. And so we're not going to listen to them here. We're just going to drive off and see what happens. Well, what happened was uh, there was a roadblock. They tried to get past the roadblock. They got stuck. And this is where the video now picks up. Again, it's a little disturbing, but I want you to have the context of what happened. Watch. Ready? Well, where's those amp? Where's the guns? They got him stuck. He can't get around it. Yeah. Hang on. Okay, they're shooting. Hang on. Okay, we're here. Go ahead and shoot me. Stand. Stand. Stay down. 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 Are they shooting him? Did they shoot him? You asshole. Oh my God. Stay down. I can't Is he out. dead? Don't get out. Are you hit? No, I am too! Help him! No, hold on, hold on, don't shoot. Hey, no shooting! Don't do anything. The door is hit. Where the hell is the boy? Is he on the floor? Is he shooting? I can't see. No, help him! Shut up. 
And you see at the end, uh, the passenger in the back also has a weapon that he's holding. So, um, Lavoie Finnecum said over and over again here, and I'll quote it again for you guys. You can go ahead and shoot me, put the laser right there, pointing to his head, put the bullet through the head. So, uh, now at a minimum, this appears to be a justified shooting. Now at the time, and I'll uh, say the same thing here, I said, look, I wish the cops would have shown a little bit more restraint. Now I say the same thing when it's an unarmed black man and when it's an armed right wing militia member. Uh, not when he reached into his pocket, I understand that. Even so, I would have liked for them to see the gun before they took a shot at him. But I, I get that this is a, clearly a situation where these guys are armed and they might shoot the cops. It is the most dangerous situation a cop could be in. The first two shots at the, at the car uh, before they got out, I didn't like that either. Okay, So I'm being very clear about that. Now on the other hand, What's amazing to me is, I don't think this was suicide by cop, and I could be wrong about that. But to me, it looked like they were genuinely surprised. The passengers, as you can tell, were genuinely surprised that he got shot. They're like, did they shoot him? Oh my God, did they shoot him? Right? But you're all holding guns. You said on tape before, these same guys said on tape, we'll kill the cops who come and try to take our guns away and who try to get us out of this uh, building. Lavoy Finnegan walks out like he owns the place because he thinks he does. I think this was more white privilege than anything else. I think he was to some degree legitimately surprised that he was shot by the cops. Because he's told the cops what, what they're going to do and gotten away with it before. And he probably thought, well, yeah, of course, not like I'm black or, or anything like that. No, those are the thugs, those are the criminals, those are the dangerous people. I'm just a patriot. I'm a patriot walking around. I'm going to tell the cops what to do. If I want to take out my gun, I'll take out my gun, right? But all of these guys, now, we'll never know exactly what was going through LeBoy Finnecum's mind, but you can see there, I don't, when he says, come and shoot me here, I don't think he means come and shoot me. I know that's a funny thing to say because he's got the other people in the car. He doesn't want them getting shot, right? Um, as far as we can tell. I think he thinks, I'm, I'm calling your bluff. You're not going to shoot me. I'm white. I'm a right winger. Now he doesn't think about it like consciously, like they don't cops don't shoot white people. He just assumes it. Now whether that was in the voice head or not, you know right now all the other militia members, all the people who support him, are shocked and chagrined that this happened. Oh, <gasps> when someone has a gun and they're about to take it out, cops shoot them. These are the same guys who will then turn around and say, "I know that." A uh, kid was 12 years old and didn't have a real gun. He had a toy gun, and they didn't give him any chance, and they shot him dead in two seconds. But he had it coming. He had it coming, right? And oh well, that guy was uh, black, but he was totally unarmed. <laughs> there were a couple instances of unarmed black men who were naked, who couldn't possibly have a gun. Yeah, but they had it coming. You shot a white guy who had a gun and was about to pull it up on, pull it out on cops. <gasps> How dare you! They are legitimately shocked because they don't realize the privilege that they have. They're used to not getting shot by the cops. So when that happens, and there's just a little bit of equality applied, <laughs> they don't know what to do with it. Wow. Turns out the cops don't let them kill you. Hmm. Wow, that's a new one for right wingers in America. Imagine if they had to go through what black people in this country have to go through. These are the guys who say the government is oppressing them. Imagine if the government was actually oppressing them. Can you imagine if instead of giving them three weeks to hang out after they had an armed takeover of a federal building, they shot them dead in two seconds flat like they did to Tamir Rice? Imagine what their reaction would be then. 